Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. It's about 3.20, uh, the 4th of March, Tuesday, 24, 25, minus 3 Celsius degrees. Hey, could you guys see that? I think you could see that. Minus 3, minus 2, minus 3, there we are. Well folks, I've got to have a little talk with you. And it's about the Horde. You know, owning a Horde is really, really cool. It's great. You gotta love having a Horde. But, parental guidance please, guys. Um, if you're too young to hear this, please turn off the video. Sometimes owning a Horde is like having a 36 inch Sometimes owning a hoard is like having a 36 inch pecker, okay? Now, for those of you who say, wow, 36 inch pecker, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to own? Just think about your typical male has a, you know, 30 inch, 32 inch, 34 inch, maybe even a 36 inch in inseam. So, if your inseam is the same as your pecker length, just imagine how much trouble you have with that pecker every time you try to put on a pair of pants. What leg are you going to put it in? Or are you going to have three-legged pants? Just imagine when you go out on that date and you, uh, you display your goods for the girl the first time. Unless she has a whole load of experience, what the heck is she going to do with that thing? So, once again, kind of cool to have. Could also be a bit of a problem. Why am I ranting about my hoard? Because I own all this great stuff. I own two garages. I own a million sheds. And I can't work on anything because it's too cold to be outside to work on it. The basement is full. And not that I could get any of this big stuff in the basement anyway. But I'm like all roped up because I can't move because I'm drowning in hoard. So... Remember guys, as you begin to hoard stuff, make sure you set yourself up that there's enough space so that you could do the things you need to do. And let me also tell you something. It is great to begin to accumulate stuff, especially if you can accumulate stuff while you're relatively young. I accumulated a lot of these three-wheelers over the years, a lot more recently because I've been able to. I've been able to afford to. Um, great. You, you know, I accumulated a lot of the Honda 70s and 50s, you know, the ATC 70s. I, I've accumulated a lot of cool stuff. That Easy Go over there, that's actually a Cushman. You know, the Cushman downstairs. And, you know, even these Cushmans, right? Got a lot, a lot of really cool stuff. But you have to remember, as you get older, you got to be able to work on this stuff. I've accumulated this stuff over 30, 35 years, and now that I own it all, I have to physically be able to work on it. If not, it's worthless. How many years could I leave this police Cushman outside, right? You see the patina on the side of it. Well, how long before that patina becomes a hole? And once it becomes a hole, every rodent in the world will live in there. Next thing you know, I'm going to walk up to it, and there's going to be a nest of possums or raccoon or skunk or whatever into it. So one has to be able to take care of their toys. If you're going to own a hoard, you got to be able to take care of it. I put together kind of a lift system, as you guys saw, and a bunch, bunch of, you could see those T-bars over there, right there. Those are a bunch of those lawnmower lift things, you know, to kind of put these things up and down from up here wasn't working exceptionally well and especially in my current condition after the surgery I don't think even with the help of that lift, lift system and the table that I'd be able to get things up and down so you know once again it's great to own this stuff but you got to be able to work on it if I put stuff up on that shelf and that's where stuff goes to die right before you know it the tires are flat which means not only do you have to get the bike down, 
which with flat tires is even harder to do. But once you get it down, now you got to pull the tires off and find another set or f- try to fix them. Most of the time they dry rot before they go flat, so fixing them really isn't an option. And um, you know what? For three-wheelers, tires have gotten expensive through eBay. Um, best deal, and maybe you guys know something I don't know. It seems that your best tire deal, even if you get them on some kind of clearance, you're still looking at over 50 bucks a tire, more like 65 or 70 But just for a number, let's throw 50 bucks a tire, which means your typical three-wheeler, you take it down, you got to throw a $25 carburetor at it, you got to throw, you know, what is that? Uh, 50 bucks is another 150 bucks worth of tires, plus the carburetor, plus a few other things. Before you know it, you got $200 into it. And that's just to take it down and ride it around the house three times to put it back up on the shelf until the tires go flat for, for a second time. One has to be able to access their junk. And to that end, I've been kind of looking at my basement, looking at what I own. Uh, Another situation I'm running into, we've discussed my employment situation. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be employed. Depending on what rumors you listen to, for technical people like myself, I'm considered an engineer. Um, Supposedly... They've reconsidered, and they're going to keep all the engineers and the technicians, supposedly. Which means I might not get laid off. Or I might get laid off a week from Tuesday. I truly have no clue. I've been told a bunch of names were removed from the layoff list. Though the person who told me that... Though she was a manager, she would not go into the detail, especially when I started, well, engineers or technicians or both, and, you know, we went round and round and round, and she started to to get squirrely. The reason why I think engineers and technicians are going to be exempt, because my company made the governor certain guarantees back a while ago when, uh, when the company received tax benefits that they would keep a certain number of engineers and technicians employed. So that's why I think I still may have a job. But anyway, back to the hoard. What am I going to do? Up here, what I want to do is there will still be loose bikes up here. That thing has to get running and start and stop. And when the door opens, turn the key, fire it up, drive it out. That's what has to happen with that guy. What I also want to do is I want to put a, um, they call them mid-rise lifts. I think Musty One has one. Um, Also, Wild-Eyed Northern Boy just bought one, though... Uh, he, he fixed it up, and he says it functions, but I'm not sure if he's going to put it in uh, what he, he calls the uh, ghetto garage. That's the garage, the shoe shack. Actually, the shoe, sh- the shoe shack is the bigger one. That's at his mom's house. The ghetto garage is the one near, near his house there, um, right, right near his residence. So I'm not sure where he's going to install that, um, but that would be a wonderful thing to have. You push a button, the vehicle comes up, you change the oil, you change the tires, you do the brakes. For these guys, it'd be much easier and and like that. I also noticed Musty One seems to have one of those that he kind of keeps on one side of his garage. And then on the other side, he has a, a smaller lift for these type of things or tractor snowblowers or whatever. There's a person, I, I forgot his his name on YouTube, who actually picture an L, right, your standard L, um, with a scissor situation, right? So it's lying flat with a scissor situation. You put whatever you want on it, and on the upper L, he's got a hoist here, one of the Harbor Freight things it looks like. So he squeezes the button, and it pulls the thing forward but once again it's on a cantilever so as it pulls it forward it actually pulls it up and takes it to height 
that would be helpful for over here. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, obviously, one has to play with angles and metal and so forth to see how long it would be. But it'd be great for something like that to live in the center here, right? Um, have a set of wheels on it so you can kind of tilt it and roll it to where you need. Have it come halfway up and then you can work on what you need to work on. Have it come all the way up so that you can put things up there if that's what one wants to do. So once again, a uh, mid-rise lift, I think they're called. They go up about 48 inches. And then a, um, a, uh, a, a tractor lift, so to speak. I think I made this, I think this is like 60 inches tall. I'm not sure how even tall I made it. I did bring a tape up to figure this out. About 50 inches tall. So if I made that lift and it was good for 50 inches, halfway up, you know, 36, be real convenient to work on. It appears as if what Musty Juan does is once again he has it over here and he seems to put his tools on it and then whatever he's working on the Volkswagen or whatever he has it on the other left and he has that at whatever height it needs to be. Um, one also should note that he moves his vehicles in and out of the garage when he was setting up the the single cab he set it up so that it was runnable so he could take it in and out of the, the garage right he didn't just bring it in there to die right if he would have brought it in there and the motor was dead then it's kind of stuck in there and should he need to bring something in and else out he's kind of screwed so that that's actually a smart thing Along with doing a few things to make this place easier, I also got to get the ceiling insulated. It would take um, three sheets across this way and eight sheets across this way, so 25 sheets of rigid foam to do the ceiling in this place, and then a bunch of two by fours to help block it up, especially around where those cross things go for the um, for the garage door. I'm probably going to turn those into single um, wooden elements coming coming down, or perhaps um, I'm going to create angle iron for it, but um, put a welded T so I don't need two, right? I don't I don't really want those cross braces. Um, it'll be bad enough with one hole in it. But anyway, so that's 24. I'm not sure what those sheets cost. I don't know, 20 bucks a sheet, 25 bucks a sheet. So I am looking at a few bucks there. If it's 25 bucks a sheet, what's that come up to? $600. So for 600 bucks, then I put the pellet stove out there and I have a nice, warm, functional garage. That would make me a lot happier and warmer and I could get some stuff done. Moving down to the lower garage. See all this snow? Is this not stupid? I own a backhoe loader. That backhoe loader, I can easily pick up um, 1,500 pounds. I think if I bounce the hydraulics, I could get close to 2,000 pounds out of it. It can lift up. What am I doing with all this snow here? This snow should have been removed back when it happened well the reason why it's here is because to get the thing out I got to do all this crazy digging and so forth plus there's stuff in front of it and around it and everything else I think if you look at the right angle you can see the smokestack sticking up right there well beneath that smokestack is the backhoe loader I gotta change this this doesn't work for me anymore what I have is a Cushman sitting here, which I kind of use for fall cleanup, spring cleanup. So I don't use it all that much, but where is it sitting? Right in prime real estate. Where is that thing sitting when I really need it all the time? Someplace I can't get to it. What I'd like to do, if you're looking at the garage doors, 
right? I don't know if you guys could see this. So this is aimed just the way the garage doors are. See off to the side here, the backhoe loader. I want to put the backhoe loader here, right? And I want to put the Cushman basically where the backhoe loader is. And then I got to go through this stuff. I mentioned my welders. I have two Lincoln tombstones. There's the one of them. That's the ACDC one. Bought that thing new. Never could weld with it. I think I'm missing um, one of the half the wave, top or bottom. I'm not sure why. I gotta open it up and figure it out. There's the old tomb tombstone I bought. Save that one from the junk. It's probably worth God, it's probably worth fifty bucks in copper. That other red thing right there is a Freon reclaiming thing that if you plug it in, nothing happens. I bought it for like twelve dollars at a uh, at a at a um, flea market. Really nice to own, but given it doesn't work, right? You're looking at a lot of space taken up here. So what am I up to? I've kind of come up with a plan over the next week. By this weekend, it's supposed to make it into the 40s here in the Hudson Valley. I want to start working my way toward getting this plan executed. Get the backhoe over here. Keep it running. Keep it warm. Keep it ready to go. So whenever I need it, it's ready to fire up. That's going to require getting a bunch of this crap out of here, which means the snow has to melt. Though a lot of it's firewood. There's firewood in here. There's firewood in that blue bucket. There's firewood underneath there. So that's obviously firewood. Um, there's a pallet for firewood. Most of this crap is firewood, so I, I need to get it cleaned up. That's just snow. If I get this area all straightened out, backhoe loader, drive it right out whenever I need it, whenever I need to load or unload something from the trucks, it will make my life a whole lot easier. So, there's the plan. Remember, guys, as you're putting your hoard together, don't let it become like an oversized wang. Make sure that you keep it functional. Folks, thanks for listening to me rave. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for commenting on my videos. Um, enjoy the comments. Remember, live, love, and have a great time. We'll catch you at the next episode of The Hoard. Until then, remember to keep your tires down, your feet down, your tracks down, your head, your handlebars, and your steering wheels up. Bye now.